version of the Fault in Our Stars. Thank you, jeez, you guys are so supportive. This is wonderful. Um, I feel like I have my man card back and everything. Okay. So uh, there's a phrase in the movie that was said once and you probably missed it. Um, but when the mom is talking to the main character, she says, if you were to leave, it would hurt like hell. Um, if I were to lose you, it would hurt like hell. And there's also another line, which is like the main thing is, pain demands to be felt. So that's kind of what this poem is called. It's called Hurt Like Hell. You know, I've been thinking about the phrase hurts like hell. And I've been trying to configure the denotation without the connotation. And I've noticed that there's a problem that arises from this separation. Because I think if we take it literally, it can start to cause an abrasion. When the truth of our words meets our feelings, it might cause a castration. For the words to mean nothing and have a complete cessation of meaning altogether as we witness paper thin promises and deflation. Do we ignite hell in our pain? Construe the phrase into a hell-like hurt, in that in our pain we create a flaming afterlife, in which we slowly kill off the main characters to our story with our depression. Do we affect realms outside of our vision, distancing angels from our side through vision, splitting the cells from that healing side in derision, denying the existence of a creator? Do we create flames to cauterize those very wounds, only to pass out hours later from the fumes, smoke that doesn't come from a cigarette, but still chars lungs and consumes every piece of us that still breathes and exhumes every memory that still haunts us? Or do we hurt like we're living the same punishment over and over in repetition, while burning hot sand and coal singe our feet as we run in circles? and circle the same plot of land like we were raised here. We know every inch and every stitch that it's caused. Do we experience evil with every letdown, bruise, cut, sore, break up, broken bone, death and disease? Is all pain a reflection of Satan? Pitchfork and horns reopening those wounds every time God sealed them. I think I forgot that. Jeez, this like never happens. Actually, it happens a lot. Um, hold on just a quick second. Hope this doesn't take away from anything. <laughs> it probably does that. Dang it. Okay, seriousness. <laughs> Do we ride upon a table in a ceaseless manner? Living out the rather large or small clamor in our heads as we deathlessly rationalize that we're not crazy. But we are crazy to think that these definitions truly add up. And the abrasion is still real because there are lies circling in our heads, screaming to build a bridge and get over it. Well, are we over it? Soaring high above with wings made with wax. We melt if we get too close to anything that gives life. Walking on stilts so that no one can look into our eyes and see deep wells overflowing to the point of flooding. And as we bend over to try to stop the loss of adhesive and water by cupping, we fall out of the sky and lose our balance at the same time. And that rickety bridge that we built out of rotten wood and band-aids crumbles into the sea from our impact. And all people see on the outside is a broken mess. We can prevent this by stopping ourselves when we stop to guess how we're going to make it through another day with fraudulent finesse because faking it until you make it fails to possess any honest growth, I do confess. Hurt is more like rejection in its highest form, like the greatest life source to ever exist turned its back on you and told you to weather the storm. The last time I checked, bleeding hearts don't conform to blood thinners and spackle plaster that are meant to keep us warm. Warm, apparently in congruency with burning, I see. Makeshift vascular organs pumping air every day. 
seemingly abandoned bodies floating from place to place in a way that causes blank expression after blank expression to meet and speak the words, I'm fine. Hurt is rejection in its highest form. And rejection breeds rejection because we choose to ignore it. The pain, if that wasn't obvious enough, we ignore the pain because the pain reminds us that we're alive and being alive reminds us of the pain so we stop running in circles and refuse to take another step until even the very thought of movement is pushed so far down into the recesses of our soul that motion causes us to suffocate. But don't you realize the pain demands to be felt? Why else would we suffocate? If for no other reason but to live. Because we cannot truly live until we have felt agony, soul gripping bankruptcy, callous fists thrown by family, pangs of loneliness in your stomach falling like gravity, waves of depression so thick that you can taste it palpably. Sleepless spells that seem to come randomly, swarming violent thoughts that seem to press on your sanity, months without a home that leave you dressed scantily divorced, that rips in your children with tangible travesty bullying, that leaves you believing that all there is in this life is vanity. These tragedies are not given by God, but create a greater testimony. Something that reaches beyond you and reaches beyond me it takes a life of its own. So to disown pain is to disown life itself. So if we always choose to exit the places of affliction that we sometimes meet and continue to let the burdens inside of us continue to swell, we'll all remain battered and bruised. No one will ever understand what it means to hurt like hell. Thank you.